Have you ever dreamed of being the number one greatest Geometry Dash player ever? Don't lie to yourself, everyone has. Everyone wants all the success and praise for being the best. And today, we'll go over the story of the kid who took this dream and made it a reality. Zoink's career started off well with him knocking out the level Bloodbath, one of Geometry Dash's most iconic extreme demons, known for its tough ship gameplay. Now, this would have been an impressive feat in 2015, but by this time, hundreds of harder levels have been created to the point that this map was pushed aside. If he wanted any chance of being number one, he needed to start working his way up the demon list, a chart that ranks the hardest maps in the game and gives players a score based on how many levels they've beaten. Now when most normal players try to improve their GD skills, they tend to gradually work their way up to harder levels, improving their ability with ladder steps one tough map at a time. But this method takes a lot of patience as it often takes months or even years, and that could very well mean an eternity to an ambitious teenager like Zoink who wants success now. He wasn't any old normal player. So what did he do? He ditched the stupid ladder and jumped right to the top, to Zodiac. This map was no joke. Spanning an entire 3 minutes in length, it was a tough endurance test that called for the top skill in the game, which is why Zoink struggled so much with it. Bloodbath to Zodiac was an absolutely crazy jump, though not something entirely unheard of. The player Space UK popularized jumping when he went from an insane demon to a top 20, and he went on to keep grinding and becoming a legend in the community. Maybe if Zoink followed in his footsteps, he could achieve the same thing too. Why would anyone torture themselves with such a huge jump though? Well, it lets beginners get used to the unforgiving gameplay that top levels throw at you. It's like how pro sports players players used to play with better, older opponents when they were kids. But of course, this path is often tough and frustrating, as you need to pour in a crazy amount of time and effort into these levels to make up for your lack of skill. And Zoink would only clear Zodiac after a stupid grind of 40,000 attempts. I did it! I did it! Oh my god! I did it! I did it! I did it! I did it! On that very same day, that Space UK guy I mentioned earlier would beat a level 2. You may have heard of it, it was called Slaughterhouse. The level's difficulty was true to its name. It was genuinely miles ahead of anything built before, and I think you can see why. Just look at how tight this wave part is. This impressive feat, along with this massive list of completed extremes, would cement Space UK as the greatest player in the game. If Zoink wanted to claim that number one spot for himself, he'd have to not only conquer the demon list, but defeat this titan as well. And the best way to start would be by matching his accomplishments and beating Slaughterhouse 2. It's crazy to believe that Space UK managed to clear this in just under a week. It's almost as if he was hacking or something. Zoink was on the chase for the top spots, and knocking out the number one level was a surefire way to get there. Into 2022, he'd put his head down and fight through Slaughterhouse, recording 51% in January. But a tragic event a few days later brought his progress to a halt. Another level, Succuban Circles, was verified and placed above Slaughterhouse, making it lose its prestigious number one spot. Beating the second hardest level isn't nearly as cool as beating the first. I think you can guess why. Feeling demotivated after pouring so much time and effort into this wasted project, Zoink would slow down his work on the level and instead turn his attention to other demons. With the Zodiac skill boost, he'd continue fighting through other top levels. Tartarus, the Golden, Sonic Wave Infinity. He was pouring hours upon hours into grinding out these demons and making fast progress because of it, and thanks to a shiny new keyboard he got, his skill would only increase. Why on earth would he use that, you might ask? Well, playing with the up arrow over a mouse may seem a bit goofy because, I mean, have you tried it? It feels so awkward, but top-end keyboards like the Corsair K70 Zoink got allow for near zero input delay, which is crucial when you're tackling levels on the demon list, and his crazy grind would show everybody just how powerful the keyboard is over the mouse. 
I be hard machine. I be hard machine. I be hard machine. I be hard machine. Now, with more and more pros playing through the two levels on the top, they realized that Slaughterhouse was actually much harder than Succubin Circles, and it was shifted back to the number one spot where it belonged. This gave Zoink the bright neon green light to go in for the kill on Slaughterhouse and claim his top level. The grind was long and tough, with a crushing fail at 91%. He was so close and he'd finally make the kill in April. Yes, 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 yes. He was only 14, by the way. People don't realize just how young their favorite Geometry Dash players really are. You need to have a crazy amount of free time to pour into competitive play, so it makes sense why the game is dominated by teenagers in school, and only someone so young would do something as stupid as playing this fucking game. Like, how do you even enjoy this? With the number one level under his belt, Zoink would continue fighting down the list, knocking out top 10 after top 10, with incredibly low attack counts each time. After struggling hard with levels like Zodiac in the beginning, he was truly getting into the groove with top demon list levels. And in 2022, we'd really see him shine. What? Oh oh it's over. It's over. We are finished. I beat hard machine. I beat hard machine. I said it. Let's go. He cleared Arcturus on May 18th, rounding off the top 10. Man, what a flex is it for someone to ask you what your hardest completions are, and you just point at the demon list like he was that good. But despite his incredible skill, he was still criminally underrated. This is a problem in the Geometry Dash community. Talented demon list grinders go completely unnoticed, as all the attention flows to the number one player or popular YouTubers and streamers. This shouldn't come to much of a surprise, I mean, take any sport, so let's say sprinting. You all know who the fastest man in the world is, right? Usain Bolt. Maybe you even know who the second fastest guy is, but I guarantee you don't know the third. I didn't either, I had to search him up. Zoink was on his way up, but if he wanted to make a name for himself in the Geometry Dash world, he needed to do something big and fast. But how? Well, just look at the legends of the past. Riots with the Bloodbath, Sonics with Sonic Wave, even Space UK with Slaughterhouse. They did a lot of amazing stuff in their time, but the reason they've been cemented in GD history is because they managed to push the limits of the game. They didn't simply beat the hardest level, they made it. They're the ones who took the step further when no one else would. What I'm getting at is that Zoink beating Slaughterhouse was certainly cool, but he was a third person to do it. But now, if he was the first to be at a level harder than it, that would be a surefire way to make himself known. And as luck would have it, there were two levels harder than Slaughterhouse just waiting for someone to beat, Silent Clubstep and Acheron. One was an ancient level created way back when by the player Salient. It was stupidly hard because of its offbeat gameplay, with one section literally being dubbed the 8 jumps of hell due to how precise the clicks are. The other level was Acheron. Its creator said out to make the most excruciating map imaginable and they certainly succeeded it doesn't hold back there are no breaks at all and the dark theme only adds to its scariness it was originally set to be verified by the player wolves but after he got a crushing 96 percent fail he decided to drop it leaving the map open to anyone to beat any normal person would see this level and sprint the other way but zoink wasn't normal he'd pick this map and run right into it We'll get into Acheron after a brief message from today's sponsor, War Thunder. It's the biggest vehicle combat game ever created. You can challenge others in dynamic PvP battles. Each of the 2,000 tanks, planes, helicopters, and ships War Thunder offers are incredibly detailed and modeled to their individual parts, creating a realistic and immersive experience. It's free to play everywhere, PC, Xbox, and PlayStation. The game is absolutely beautiful with incredible graphics and authentic sound effects and you can personalize your vehicle and truly make it yours. I like the game because it's easy on new players, and using my link will get you a huge bonus pack to start off your journey. It includes an exclusive vehicle decorator, 100,000 silver lions, a 7-day premium account, and much more. It's only for new players and those who haven't played in 6 months, and is available for a limited time only. The game is also celebrating the new year with 3 exclusive festive decals that anyone can pick up if you log in before February. So hop right into War Thunder using my link in the comments or description. Again, the game is free and I hope to see you there. Now, where were we? Oh yeah, 
Zoink and Acheron. By this point, the race to beat it was already in full swing, with the player 1 Alpha Helix holding the 67% record. But Zoink would make his presence known. After grinding out the level on Twitch, he'd nearly match that with a 66% run. This is more impressive when you realize that he wasn't playing on the same version of Acheron as Wolves or Alpha. No, no, no. Plain old Acheron wasn't enough for this ambitious teenager, so he buffed it to the point that it wasn't just harder than Slaughterhouse but a huge jump ahead of it. He'd continue to grind through his own version, and with a strong 82% run, followed by a 91 record, he'd take a firm lead over the competition. Everyone else began fighting for second place, as it seemed like Zoink's victory was inevitable. And June 9th, 2022 was supposed to be the day. Zoink was on a perfect run, clearing the hardest sections of the map, but then... 96%. He was this close to verifying the hardest level in the game, but a choke at the end snatched that all away. Wolves got the exact same death Zoink did before he dropped it. A bit funny when you think about it, but this was no joke to Zoink. You may say, well, he was this close to beating the level. Why couldn't he just push through and get it done? And to that, I'd say that you underestimate the absolute mental torture that comes with playing an extreme demon, especially one like Acheron. I mean, when half of your attempts end like this, failing to clear this frame perfect jump, I think it's pretty damn easy to get demotivated. Casual geometry dashers simply don't see the thousands of hours your favorite players put into this agonizing game off camera. And for Zoink, getting so close to freeing himself and ending all the suffering, but having it snatched away because of a tiny misclick must have really sucked. After the crushing fail, Zoink would shift his focus away from Acheron. His lead in the race was pretty safe, but the other competitors smelled blood and continued pushing through the level, with their hope to become number one regained. Even Space UK was moving into Acheron, though in Zoink's absence, it would be one Alpha Helix who'd get onto his tail. Most players would take a break from a level by getting away from GD and playing other video games, but Zoink took time off this extreme demon by beating other extreme demons. During the summer of 2022, he'd get to work filling up his demonless portfolio, he'd breeze through top levels and really pop off. The craziest thing was that he'd have such nonchalant reactions too. Like it was so easy he was getting bored. His attempt counts were tiny too, like what the heck? I probably have more attempts on deadlocked. But look at Zoink here, just flying through all these maps. Take Prometheon for example. It took the verifier a month and well over 100,000 attempts to clear it. But Zoink ran through the level in just a few days and only 5,000 attempts. Such a big difference begs the question if Zoink is maybe, just maybe lying about his attempt counts. I mean, I mean, don't get me wrong, we've seen that he's clearly very skilled, but tons of people do it and it's very easy to do. You can just delete old copies of the level you practice on to hide the evidence. While there's no proof that he's doing it, there is no proof that he isn't. So take his attempt counts, and anyone's really, with a grain of salt. With every completion, Geometry Dash's child prodigy was inching closer and closer to the number one spot Space UK held. Maybe, just maybe, he'd take it away from him. Soon enough, Zoink would return to that one demon haunting his life, Acheron. He'd continue pushing through the level and would finally move past the 96% barrier by 1%, but he wouldn't get discouraged. Being off for the summer gave him lots of free time to throw everything he had on this level, and after his biggest grind yet, Zoink would finally clear it. It was an incredible victory for not just Zoink, but the Geometry Dash community as a whole. Acheron was a massive step ahead in terms of difficulty, and with its placements at number one, Zoink was closing the gap between him and Space UK, who had suspiciously gone inactive. Around this time, an interesting video about him began floating around. Back when the legend was working through Slaughterhouse, the player Colo took a closer look at the footage Space was posting, and after analyzing this clip of him getting 92%, he spotted something very, very suspicious. Let's see if you catch it too, I'll slow it down for you. Oh. <coughs> I can't fucking react otherwise I'm gonna cough so much.
Did you spot it? Well, don't worry, we'll get into that later. People dismissed the attempted exposal of Space UK. After all, he was the community's hero. How could he possibly be hiding something? Cola was bashed all over the internet and was essentially bullied out of the community he tried to protect. When someone else tried forwarding the evidence to the demonless mods, they only got a short response in return. You are wrong. They probably didn't even watch the damn video. You know, Space UK K was known to be a bit of a charismatic and talkative guy. He'd always leave sarcastic, funny comments under videos trying to expose him because their evidence was always stupidly wrong. However, he was real silent on this one. I wonder why. Acheron was Zoink's big break. The sheer impressiveness of beating the number one level made his name known across the community, and everyone was eager to see what this young prodigy would do next. With the 2022 awards coming up, he had to really show the community who was on top if he hoped to win the best player of the year. He'd continue working down the list, breezing through the levels like they were easy demons, abyss of darkness, Kinos, limbo, nothing could stop him. However, when it came time to tally the votes for the award show, Zoink would not find himself on top, but rather it was Space UK who took the title of the greatest Geometry Dash player for the second year in a row, which is pretty shocking. During the first half of 2022, he rounded off the top 75 levels, but during the second, he practically went ghost on the game and Zoink was more than dominant. This goes to show just how much of a popularity contest the GD Awards really are. Number 1, well-known player. Number 2, well-known YouTuber. And at number 3, we have the actual greatest player. Not to bash Space or Doggy, but in my opinion, Zoink was definitely the greatest player of 2022. He'd end off the year just a few hundred points behind Space UK on the Demonless leaderboard. The Titan was on the brink of falling. And in the turn of the new year, it happened. It actually happened. With Zoink taking down space, the titan had fallen. Now, being the undisputed number one, he could only go up from here. 2023 would be his year. After knocking out number 70 on the list with only 3,000 attempts, Zoink had conquered the demon list. The entire top 75 was cleared. He was the absolute king of the game. But a scandal just a few days later would take all the attention away from him. Space UK's records on the demon list began to mysteriously disappear one by one. The mods were real quiet about it, only saying that they were doing some checks on his footage. But eventually, his entire account was banned and taken down. You see, after a closer analysis of Space UK's records, the Demon List team finally caught on to what Kolo saw earlier, and they showed their findings to the world, explaining Space UK's shocking ban. Let's look at his footage again. I don't know if you caught it earlier, but the reason why this gameplay was suspicious was that the clicking noise noises were out of sync with the actual gameplay on screen. A click 2 frames early here, 5 frames late there, it was very weird and implied something sketchy was going on. After this huge exposal made its way around the community, Space UK came out and said that only a handful of levels he beat in 2023 were hacked. He had simply gotten bored of the game and wanted to see how long he can go before getting caught. But not after long, the Demon List team would find the smoking gun that would expose every single one of Space UK's records. You see, there is hacking software out there that allows you to automate the game by recording your clicks and playing it back. It's supposed to be used for showcasing hard levels, but knowing how dangerous it could be if players use it to cheat in GD, the creators of these programs have added tiny ways to detect if someone is using it. For instance, when the program Zbot is activated, the text on the level complete screen is slightly smaller than normal. And wouldn't you know it's every single single one of Space UK's videos had this smaller text. It takes a keen eye to see it, and those who noticed it chalked it up to some weird texture pack or something. But now we know what was truly going on. He was just using Zball to play the game for him, and recording himself clicking over the footage to make it seem more legitimate. That's why everything was so out of sync. Completely exposed, he deleted his social media accounts and left the community.
His entire career was a lie. Zoink was playing against a cheater the entire time. And the craziest thing is, he beat him. Zoink beat the cheater. He rose far above him on the demon list and even matched his crazy achievements of clearing the entire top 75. He was the undisputed master of Geometry Dash. However, people weren't very warm to him or top GD players in general. I guess Space's betrayal left a bit of PTSD in everyone's minds as now everyone seems like a hacker. I mean, he went undetected for so long. Who's to say that some other top player is just some cheater in disguise, especially one like Zoink? I mean, he was so ahead of everyone else on the demon list. It was a bit of a red flag. But after the massive exposal, the demon list team got their act together and did a massive analysis of top players. So it's very unlikely that Zoink or anyone else is actually cheating. However, trust in competitive players has been completely shattered and it will never be repaired. But Zoink is Zoink. He doesn't care about the haters who constantly claim he's hacking. No, no, no. He was at his peak and he could only go up from there. Yes. I just beat Avernus right now. What? I just fluked it. I'm inside the wave. Oh my God. If you haven't tried War Thunder yet, now's a great time, as new players and those returning after 6 months can get a huge bonus pack for a limited time, and everybody who logs in before February can get the new festive decals. The game is free on all platforms, so click the link below and I'll see you on the battlefield. If you enjoyed this video, I'm sure you'll love this one that YouTube picked out just for you. But anyway, I thank you for watching and I'll catch you later.